this is something that I've kind of observed from the outside, mostly based um, around uh, the release of the Chunky Dunky SBs that came out the other day, right? Um, I think a few people got L's. I know I did. I only, I only entered a couple of raffles anyway. Raffles are probably one of the most annoying parts of having to be involved in streetwear, I think, in general. The idea that you have to kind of, you know, get into a competition for a chance to buy something. The fact that some of these stores use this opportunity to kind of data mine and gather email addresses and get you to sign up for nonsensical fucking newsletters about releases of shoes that you can buy in 17 other stores just around the corner from where you live is nonsensical. The fact that they ask you to do these crazy things like repost stuff and put stuff on your IG feed is just really, really gay. I hate everything about it. It's really annoying. Um, it's corny as fuck and I just you know I despise everything about it but if it's anything to do with just you know entering an email address so you just enter the raffle I'll do it anything that requires you to do a task or something right go outside and clap your hands you can you know you know I have not got no time for it so Chunky Dunky you know evidently called for a lot of that I guess you know they had to do something because you know the theme around the shoe was quite interesting novel idea you know with the Ben and Jerry's collaboration I get it make it a bit fun take the you know seriousness out of it but in general it was just a chance for most it was just opportunity for resellers to really cash in and make some good money and I've heard you know that these shoes are going for like what a grand or something like that on StockX I've heard let me see if that's actually true Nike Dunk SB Chunky Dunky stock X, I see how much they're going for. But supposedly they're going for like a grand. Which wouldn't surprise me. They kind of they kind of give me the what the dunk sort of vibe for this generation, it seems like, right? That's the sort of vibe I'm kinda of getting for them. So that might be a fact that they're going for that much, you know, different patterns, colours, a Ben and Jerry's thing. Cause I think a part of me is like if they didn't have an actual Ben and Jerry's you know, a logo on them or just a Ben Jerry's inspired colorway. They probably want to go for so much, but I think because the fact that they actually got the, you know Ben and Jerry's actually written on them, it's uh, it's a big look and the pony hair and stuff. Yeah, so if you're looking on the screen, they're going for like a grand three hundred. That is a lick and a half, and if you copped them for like ninety quid, which I think is the price that they probably set out at about ninety in it, right? I'm sure it's about ninety. Bombarded. That is insane. So yeah, um, you know, half decent shoe, it is what it is really. Nothing really to write home about. If you're a sneakerhead, I guess you can wear them. I don't know how you're going to make them look good, but hey, some people might be possible to do. But it kind of made me think about, you know, in general, because I have a lot of strong feelings about, you know, sneaker photography. I think it's, you know, for the most part, it's probably the lowest common denominator of average shit that exists in the streetwear community is so crap you, know, you have to look at the stuff you see on hype beast of people jumping up in slow-mo and doing that weird pin roll thing in 2020 now which you know you do, who do you see wearing pin rolls even you know long in the tooth sneakerheads don't wear pin rolls nowadays so to keep seeing that because they want to show off the shoes just cringe there's nothing innovative about it it's all the same you know regurgitate nonsense that you would have seen you know in the heydays of nike talk back in the day or crooked tongues forum it's just garbage and with that comes this weird thing where most people like i'm just trying to think of is is it possible to be a sneakerhead and be somewhat cool is that a thing or are you just destined to always be corny and be a little bit infantile minded because you're essentially collecting sneakers, which is a quote unquote a young man's game? Is that a thing? I don't too I'm not too sure because part of me will say yes because I can't think of any sneakerheads that exist in in the world who you know who would proudly call themselves that because I remember there was a time when I stopped collecting shoes or stopped buying shoes you know um you know on a regular basis where there was uh, an accepted belief that you shouldn't be telling people or showing people that you bought new shoes right it wasn't a core thing to do to be posting about the shoes you bought or your rotation or all that stuff it just wasn't even a rotation thing it had to be done like in a tasteful way like if you had like i don't know a collection of like new balances or asex shoes or something right or some undercover rebox or something yeah cool but you couldn't necessarily just show a rotation of just all jordans and nike air max it just came across a bit like what are you doing with yourself right go outside get laid you know learn, learn an instrument or something um which maybe is true maybe it's not but there is a part of me that thinks you know it's just impossible to be a sneakerhead and just not be corny like every sneakerhead person i've met or that exists on the interwebs whether it's youtubers or whoever they may be they just have this quote they just have this really 
you know, you just feel a little bit sadder for them. Of course, you get information from what they're talking about. They go through the rundown, the shoe, they do a bit of an unboxing, but you don't actually want to be that person. You might want the shoes to resell and flip and make some money, but do you want to be his friend? Do you want to hang out with them? Like, or imagine what the conversations are like with an actual sneakerhead that still exists nowadays. Or what are they talking to you about? Like, you know, are they arguing about, you know, the something's not getting retro by Nike? Like, what are they doing? Are they complaining about colorways? Like, it's just, it just doesn't make any sense now, especially when you get, because I think when you're younger, I had a lot of strong opinions when it came to sneakers because usually you know you didn't have a lot of disposable income and you were quite limited in the stuff that you could buy the scope of things that you're interested in especially when you're a young age you tend to go for loads of really leery stuff right so there's only a limited amount of things that you can buy there's only so many clot collabs and fucking you know soul box stuff or patter stuff that you can buy in a given year right so you're constantly fighting with everybody else for the same sort of loud shit then I guess when you evolve or I guess when you get older, sorry, um, and you mature a bit, your taste maybe your taste your taste maybe evolve or your palette maybe gets a little bit expanded somewhat. You maybe get into other brands, your style evolves a little bit too, which maybe can um really push you in a different direction in terms of shoes, right? If you start, you know, if you go away from wearing, I don't know, baggy jeans to wear more skinnier denim, it might call for a different silhouette of a shoe. Just your interest can just kind of evolve from there. You might end up, you know, maybe prioritizing apparel and, you know, outerwear and all that other stuff more so than your the, the shoes you wear. Because I remember when I was a sneakerhead, my wardrobe was trash. Like it was awful. Because all I wore was, because all I cared about was sneakers and t-shirts. That's it. So if, as long as my sneakers matched my t-shirt, I was game. But anything else was just an absolute afterthought. And the moment I switched and I, my kind of my overall taste evolved and I started to get into streetwear, I started to actually kind of designing stuff and interning up brands and all this sort of stuff. Then all of a sudden you start to appreciate what goes into the whole thing, right? And then streetwear became more interesting than sneakers, I would say. The streetwear side of the things is a more interesting place to live in than the whole sneaker place. Plus you get access to different brands, you end the appreciation for the form, for the craft it gives a different way design all that sort of good stuff but when you're just limited to just what you wear on your shoes what you wear on your feet it just becomes so myopic so uh, dull so corny that it just beggars belief as to why people that were in it when I was in it have still got the same amount of vigor for it that they do now I just don't I could never understand that like I just don't get it like it just doesn't make any sense and one example of this which is kind of an unfair example because by by he seems like a bit of a you know solid dude and i remember him from the crooked tongues forum but i saw this video of hikmet from um i don't know if I, i'm sure i pronounced his name but um one of the founders from soulbox in germany um who you know is well known in the industry you know got some legendary collaborations in the works in the books you know Essex, new balances some of that the, you know, the purple tone new balance back in the day were probably some of my favorite stuff he's done but just an overall solid you know guy in the scene but i saw this video and it kind of got me thinking like number one right he's he got a video of him eating ice cream ben and jerry's ice cream from his chunky donkey shoes and you know of course you know it's a bit of a troll you know he's probably having some fun with it but just the kind of like you know the smugness on his face when he's doing it he's obviously knows he's going to push some buttons but you think to yourself like who's your target audience for this video who are you trying to kind of get under the skin of 16 year olds right this guy's like 50 years old or something right he's a big man he's been in the game for a long time he's got kids and shit a family it's a business for him right sneakers it's not only you know maybe back in the day when you were first starting Soulbox it's an opportunity for you to kind of you know you know live your dream right collect shoes I mean uh, um, own your own sneaker stores have access to all the best shoes meet all the people behind the scenes you know visit oregon go to the nb factory like all these cool things that you'd only kind of you know dream about when you're on the outside as a consumer you suddenly get to do because you're an operator in the actual industry but it must come a point that you know when it, it turns into a business right when it turns into you actually trying to kind of i guess give back maybe to the people coming underneath you to the next generation to come it it stops being a sort of one upman's thing and i guess that's the thing that for me ruins sneaker um culture for me and one in that regard too that one that that one upsmanship right the idea that 
that person was better than you because they had that shoe um, and they kind of rub it in your face. I even remember when I first got into Crooked Tongues and I was like 17, 18 years old and you're having arguments with these people online and then later on you realise, especially when I got to uni, it's like, wow, those guys I was arguing with, they were like 40 years old and you go and meet them at, you know, at Crooked Tongues meet and greets and stuff or, you know, the little um, gatherings they had and you're like, wow, these grown men were arguing with children online with vigour, with kind of, you know, with some really heated words of being exchange maybe some vowed threats were being you know um flung out there by the by or you know via pms or whatever maybe and you're like wow man like you just i remember when you i, I, I distinctly remember that was when it kind of especially when i when i was then decided to work here at night in 48 and i saw how you know people went to like you know essentially just suck me off for a pair of free shoes it just got a little bit yuck i don't want to be anywhere around this and i distinctly remember being at those kind of meets um those kind of forum meets that they used to do go to a bar or when they did a sort of like i forgot that big thing they did in nike town with crooked towns where we all came and brought our shoes distinctly remembering like when i get older i don't want to be like these guys right i want to be an operator in the scene i want to be you know a kind of you know hiroshi fujiwara you know collaborating with with brands and stuff but i don't want to be one of these dudes that's having to like be snarky and be a bit of a bitch and a diva to like young kids because i want to make sure i get my size eight fucking air max ones you know what i mean it's like this is retarded so um i see this video and i'm like who is he really doing this for like is he doing it for like me like an older sneakerhead people that want or is he doing it to wind up the kids like who's this actually target demographic um here's a video of him eating an ice cream i guess he's getting the ben and jerry's and scooping it into his dunk which is you know he's more than what to do is his shoe he paid good money for it do what you want in it like no one's against it but it's just he's obviously doing cause this is something people used to do back in the day if it was like a cereal brand they'd like pour milk into and eat from it right and it was it was kind of like a nice it's a nike talk it's more of an american thing right like ha ha and then you're doing whilst you're eating it you got all these boxes of like you know jordans in the background so it's like you know it just ain't nothing to me uh you know it's like that um iconic picture who's it is it fat joe looking to solve his air force ones it's that kind of idea right um I, you know do you don't pop tags you just leave it on because you know you're gonna wear it once all this sort of shit it's just you know you're obviously doing it to antagonize but in his position who you are who are you trying to antagonize like it's just doesn't come across that well and it's just like really this is what you're doing with your time and seeing a grown man eat ice cream like that is really cuck in it like there's something a bit wrong with you in your head in it really in it like a grown man looking into the camera eating like that is there's something a bit off about him generally won't be surprised <laughs> like and again it's sad to see because Hickmick seems like a solid dude I remember him back in the day and they didn't have any conversation with him don't get me wrong maybe I bumped into him a couple of times I've seen things but yuck man like yuck this is what sneaker is about right like being a sneakerhead this is what it is so it's like maybe my kind of word to the wise for any sort of young kids out there like don't ever ascribe yourself an identity especially in the scene like that like a sneakerhead right try and remain cool in some capacity um if you have the feeling that you need to kind of stunt on people online because you bought something don't because it's not it's no achievement you bought a shoe congratulations keep it moving shoes are meant to be worn and enjoyed if you like sneakers and you like the shoe what they're doing with the dunks or whatever they did enjoy them wear them have some good time um if you're into girls and stuff maybe wear them and go to a club somewhere get some good compliments and you know try and use it for some kind of good um i don't know or just get compliments when you go outside as opposed to trying to wind up people on the internet it just doesn't make any sense really in it really um just disturbing really in that regard i just looked at it i was like god damn it man no wonder i stopped referring to myself as a sneakerhead or come you know even communicating people in that industry or in that scene because it's just full of absolute weapons like that absolute weapons and that's an older man doing that and we've got tons of them in the uk there's tons of them in america probably still and um, it's just really bizarre that there's no way of kind of like growing old gracefully in the sneakhead community it always involves some kind of level of like corniness it's just like yuck like if that's your dad you're embarrassed if that's your friend you're like what are you doing you know what i mean like yeah i don't know but hey what do i know what do i know